Hello. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Good morning, Good morning, Raj. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. And how are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you. Are you able to hear me clearly? Yeah. Okay, Raj, I think I'm able to hear my voice. I'm able to hear the echo. Would you please? Is it okay now? I think now it's okay. I'm not able to hear myself much. It's there, but not so loud. Okay. So I hope you're doing great. How's the day treating you? Yeah, it's been nice. But okay. Now I'm a bit regular. Okay, that's nice. Good to hear that. At the same time, be regular with your practice, listening yeah. skills and reading. When it comes to practice, because there's I'm nothing definitely. magical as that. Yes. What I understand from years of experience, speaking is important, but listening and reading also does the magic. Parallelly. Yeah, and otherwise just speaking is not going to help. In that context, there is another question. I'm trying to make it out. That okay. Uh, reading one or two pages, like I had explained to you earlier, that I have been trying to make the habit of reading that way. But since in the starting few days, I had the habit of reading any book in one sitting. So I still get hooked on to that. And I feel like let me finish it as much as possible. Mm. Since okay. that is not uh, possible now because of certain mm -hmm. other reasons mm -hmm. uh, and timing issues. So how do you uh, think that the habit can be made of reading one or two pages? It's not just one or two pages. What I would recommend is, I said at least, I mean, I generally tell the learners, if you're a beginner with reading, you can begin with two, three pages. For some people are not comfortable with reading. But for you, you're already comfortable with reading. You have been re reading for some time. And due to time constraints, you are not able to read in one sitting. Or maybe read more pages than is expected, than is planned, than what was planned for the day. Now that is okay. Time constraint is there for anyone. Even for me, I'm a busy person. But I make sure that I read at least one chapter a day. One chapter could be five to six pages. But sometimes a chapter can go on for maybe 15 to 16 pages. It also depends on the language and the writing style. If the language is very crude and complex, yet beautiful, I just digest three or four pages a day. I'm only able to do that much. Only that much will be palatable for me. Yeah? yeah. But otherwise, if it is in simple language, I'll try to cover at least two chapters. So it's not just about having the pages in mind, but how much can I read within this time? Okay, I have 15 minutes break. So let me read at least a few pages. You begin that way and you complete three pages and then you go back to your work. That's one way of doing it. If you feel that you're not going to get disrupted with work. But otherwise, before going to bed or early in the morning, I feel there's no time for reading. For me, in my case, while having tea or whenever I am like relaxed, even when I'm disturbed, I read. For me, that works. Yeah. But for beginners, I always recommend you begin with two pages so that you don't get bored and give up easily. Because people just give up reading so easily. Oh, it's boring. It's too boring. And this shuts the book like that. But for you, that's different. It's due to time constraints. So stick to three or four pages. When I say pages, it could be even one chapter. But it's really complicated. If you find that it's really complicated, digest as many pages as you can. Don't force yourself. Because if you don't enjoy the content, there's no point in reading. Definitely. And that, that is why I was trying to ask this question in another context, that the moment I start reading, I get hooked on to it. So if because of the time constraint, I'm reading just seven or eight, whatever pages I have read. Mm. Or even okay. For that matter, if I have finished one chapter, then maybe I'm going to the next chapter after two or three days. Or I would okay. feel like, okay, what was there in the first chapter? Is there any connectivity? Mm. Are okay. these two chapters related? So in mm. terms of thinking about all those things, I feel that, okay, I should have completed it in one sitting. That would have been okay. 
better to understand the story in a better way okay one more thing that could be done is as you read like i have this habit i mark some good quotes words you suppose you lose track of what happened in the first chapter in the penalt in the penultimate chapters you can quickly skim through those chapters look at the words and it will come back as a flashback yeah definitely. at least some components and elements of the previous chapter right right yeah so suppose you are in the penultimate means the ch chapter just before the last chapter if you are in that chapter and you lose track of the whole story you would just go through all the words that you have underlined all the phrases quickly at a glance and then read the next one the new one the fresh one yeah that also helps yes yeah right okay so shall we get started with today's session yeah okay so i remember you telling me i want to upgrade my skills i want to go to the next level of speaking right and uh, using the language okay so i'm going to give you three situations what you have to do is i'll give you the three situations astonishment any situation of astonishment terror remorse astonishment terror remorse now in these situations you can create your own or you can visualize you can add your own um in you can have your own additions and make it surprising or interesting whatever it is even if it's from the real life add the elements of terror under that particular segment add the elements of astonishment and also remorse so let me just give a brief astonishment is nothing but surprise and wonder together it's not just surprise terror of course shock scared fear everything terrifying you say remorse is feeling sad regret pondering over something also can be remorse brooding sometimes all these little bit of all these elements so keep these things in mind and create the situation and yeah? create a situation create a situation or if we can create a very short story also that would be fine situation story or a thought is also okay but thought means you may not be able to um have that uh, direct connectivity you may have to speak from the general perspective which is also okay Got nothing it. wrong Got it. so I astonishment like terror and remorse yes uh, story one so okay a long time ago a boy lived in a village he was quite alone because he had hardly had friends of his age to play with so all he used to do was to read books and uh, listen to stories from his mother grandmother so one day he thought of going to play outside and uh, when he went there was a village uh, there was a forest nearby the village so somehow he reached nearby that forest and the moment he saw a tiger in front of him around 25 meters away he was astonished to see that and uh, the moment the tiger roared he got terrified as well and then he was unable to to carry himself back that what should i do now but mm. then somehow he managed to lie there he just lied down and uh, after a few times he saw that the tiger is going back so he was fine he came back and in sh he shared the story with uh, their parents mm -hmm. and uh, then they uh, just tried to calm him down and told him that okay you never go alone to that area again mm -hmm. and remorse and i i used another word remorse was there i had to keep include remorse in that so uh, after that uh, the parents were thinking that had he not had the kid was not been 
able to come, mm -hmm. we had had a great remorse. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Could you just rephrase that last part again? Just last rephrase part. the last part. You've almost yeah. brought in the element, but still, yeah. So, I mean, the parents were thinking that we would have faced a great remorse if we would have not been able to see our view again. Yes, possible. Good, you have uh, accommodated all the three in one situation, a kind of story which had a beginning, a climax, and also an ending. Okay, before taking a closer look at these sentences, you're preparing for the advanced level. I would like you to find out the difference between near and nearby. Okay. Okay, post session. After the session, you could read some sentences. Find out when it's used and how it's used, near and nearby. Okay. Right. Okay, so the boy was saved. That was a narrow escape. The tiger could have done anything to the boy. You could have told that he noticed that the tiger was retreating, slowly moving back, was not very happy with the boy. Maybe he was skinny or felt that it, he was not going to make a big meal for the tiger. Yeah, the tiger always looks at the person. So a little bit of comedy or a little bit of thought maybe. Uh, so yeah. maybe the boy said that maybe the tiger did not find me, find a good meal in me. And that's why it decided to retreat back to the densities of the forest. Okay, then um, he comes back and then the parents, the grandmother and mother says, you never go. So it could have been, you should never go. Never even attempt going to the forest alone. Don't do it, especially in these late hours. You need to have someone with you. Yeah, otherwise also, why did you go? What was the need for you to go alone? Yeah, so you can use words like chiding, scolding. Right. Okay giving admonishment like you know um giving a sort of warning with some kind of assertiveness right, right. yeah and um okay so now you have used all these three astonishment terror remorse can you add a little bit of happiness into the same story you can add you can extend the plot if you want you can add something in between it's up to you but now add some happiness or excitement. So after uh, that, the parents uh, were happy seeing his mm -hmm. kid coming back again uh, with no harm at all. And uh, they thought that we should set an example for all the kids so that they never go to the nearby forest. and. Uh, for the sake of that, they uh, threw a party. Good. Where they had to explain. The boy was about to explain the story that he went through that day. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. other kids or other people had to learn something from there. Good. So they did it. They planned the party in that way. And it was a good success. So considering all things, it was a happy moment for everyone. Okay, right, that was fine. So throwing a party is a good usage. Yeah. Okay. The next part is there would have been a moment when the boy decided to go alone, walk alone, that is daring to walk alone into the depths of the forest, which requires some courage. For children, they don't think much, they just walk because they don't know the consequences. What you have to do is you have to create a monologue. Okay, that is talking to yourself. Like, for example, if I see water in front of me as a child, I would have all these thoughts. Hey, the water looks so good. It's glistening. And I think it's calling me. I need to dip myself in it. Let me see if anybody is watching me. Such kind of thoughts. So as the boy was walking from the, so if this is the home to the jungle, which is this, maybe this way, this path the boy took, can you think of a monologue? and just keep speaking it should come out yeah so you have to take the role of a boy of that character so uh, you can think if you want you can take time yeah since uh, the boy was quite alone and he hardly had the friend circle 
Mm -hmm. So we used to think that the moment I listen to all these stories, okay. I have to try it at my own as well. I have to see okay. it naturally. And since the, the story of her grand, uh, his grandmother used to be around animals and uh, birds, he thought of going towards the nearby village. And okay, why so can you make the dialogue like as if you're saying it? All the all the aspects are right. So I so I I think trying to yeah go. He thought yeah. But okay, what if I go alone? Mm. Will will I be scolded after my parents come to know? He thought for a second, but then he thought that it hardly matters if I come back. Uh, uh, if I come back on time, nobody will notice, and uh, it would be easy for me to come back. Let me go. Okay. At the same time, I thought that since it is a forest, what if any animal comes in front of me? Yes. Any dangerous one? If the bird mm -hmm. comes, it's okay. I would enjoy. But what about mm -hmm. the dangerous animals or birds? How would I okay. be able to es escape? But by the time he was thinking all this, mm -hmm. uh, he, he thought another thing that, okay, whatever happens, let it be. I mm -hmm. have to test it today. Okay. And uh, okay. And he, yes. raised, he raised by, uh, he raised on the spot while thinking all okay. this. Right. Okay. That was good. So when you're asked to create a dialogue kind of monologue something that comes out like a dialogue you can always use a first person now that was yeah. perfect but now you can add some words like i'm quiet i'm anticipating some encounters okay of course as a boy the boy may not have much vocabulary but still to upgrade yourself encounter consequences and then ranting you know you have all these ranting which is not very meaningful and right. also you can speak about the ramblings in your mind. Ta -da -da -da, incomplete thoughts. What if? Shall I? Will anybody see me as a hero or a fool? Yeah, people tell me that I'm not very courageous, but let me show them today something. Let them let me show them what I'm made of. Yeah. So he was quite relentless with thoughts and ideas until he reached, until he realized that he has almost reached the depth of the forest. Now there was no turning back. Even if he wanted to go back, there was no turning back. Because as you walk, you may not realize that you have already reached a particular place. Because you're so engrossed in your thoughts. Yes? So it's, yeah. it's all about imagery and thoughts here. You walk, you can also relate your experience of walking down the road. Sometimes we don't take note of what's happening around. And you're engrossed in thoughts. So all the words and the phrases. Okay, good. That was great. And uh, I hope you get all the words. I have tried using some words for you to upgrade your vocab. Yeah, sure. Okay, now what you have to really work on is words like animals. Ah, animals. Animals, animals. yes. Okay. Yeah. But most of the words do not have this issue. Only here and there. Animals is not right. Animals. Animals. Attempt. Yeah, attempt. So I'm putting more words. Endanger, danger. So you can stress the word danger. People say that I'll be in danger. What danger? Let me see that to myself. Let me experience it. Right. As, a as a child, always they will have that kind of curiosity. The forest looks intriguing. And it looks very, for a child it could be pleasant, green. And what's so dangerous about a forest? And as soon as he sees the tiger, he gets astonished, but he gets attracted also. Beautiful stripes. It almost looks like the soft toy that's kept on my television, near the television. Not realizing that this tiger is ferocious. Yeah, like that. You can connect it with the child's anxiety, thoughts, and um, curiosity. Definitely. Okay? Right. So you can try this out. So I just gave you three. Now, why I gave you emotions and feelings is because it's quite difficult and these are abstract, absurd um, elements of language, thoughts. It's not very easy to convert it into speech. 
but we can do it with some kind of phrases we can do justice to it at least 85 to 90 percent that's why i gave you emotions and feelings yeah? and i recalled our first session that even in that you had uh, done this kind of activities that i had to form a story of out of three or four words or maybe mm -hmm. to use some sentences so i would like to tell you one thing that from there onwards i had made a note that i have to do this activity almost every day and uh, after doing that practice for quite a long time now i am applying this on my students as well i allow them to with few words and let them make a story or fabricate on their own and this has helped me to some extent if i rate myself that how was that or how is today then around if that was five out of ten this is around uh, seven and a half or eight out of ten good good I now you have to still work on it yes of course i have to touch that ten out of ten for sure the next yes, definitely you will yeah so that's why i have used the same activity but if you've noticed i have upgraded it i yes. cannot use these words on a beginner learner the beginner may ask me astonishment what is the difference then i have to explain allow him to experience that particular emotion if you're not able to experience it through a story then there's no point in giving so i know where you have reached from the way you convey your thoughts because you are very good with details details means you are very good with observing as observant as always so there you have reached the level though you are still working towards your vocabulary good thought comes first before the speech yeah that's it good and thanks a lot any doubts any other clarification anything that you want any questions uh, no nothing in particular okay so nice meeting you and keep learning glad to know about all the updates thank you it was bye -bye. lovely talking to you as always lovely talking to you as always bye for now see you in another session yeah bye